Shabbat Shalom and welcome to the Book of Acts Now Global Church and Global School. We're here today in His presence knowing that He is in control of it all. A lot of people have given up on Him today, on what His Word said and what He prophesied and told forth, but it's still going to happen. Hallelujah. And we're here in Brownwood, Texas today in the Book of Acts Now Church to call in His works to be done. He's going to do some great works. Hallelujah. So we call in these great works to be done for His glory and in His name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can look in Ezekiel. Look at Ezekiel sometime in chapter 25 to chapter 35. There are nations it speaks of that He has sent judgment on. One in Isaiah 19 and one, it was Egypt. And uh, Nebuchadnezzar was the one that Yahweh used to, to send forth judgment on e Egypt. But all these different nations that are in Ezekiel 25 to chapter 35. And Israel was one of them in 70 AD. He's about to do a work shortly. It's going to be every nation in one. It's going to happen. There's things that have happened this last year, 2020, and all the evil, deceiving workers of iniquity, they were demonic workers of Satan, have done works that are beyond what we can even imagine. The, the trafficking of human bodies and coming against the humanity. But a lot of, us, a lot of people just kind of shove it back and forgot it. But I tell you one thing, our Creator, our true judge and righteous judge has not. He's going to do us some things, and it's all happening. It's all still going to take place. And like I say, a lot of people's given up on what has been done and just saying, well, let it be. No, He's not going to let it be. I can feel it in my heart and my soul. I know it according, according to His Word, according to His will. So today we're just uh, praising Him and thanking Him that He is in control, that He's going to do a mighty work, a glorious work. He's bringing up the end time here. He's finishing up all that He has created, all in His great creation. He's bringing it to the end. Evil will be put in its place, and the righteous, godly people are going to be put in their, our places. Hallelujah. And that's with Him. All these demonic works are going to be put into the lake of fire. And that's coming up before too long. Yeah, we still got a thousand years of peace. And that's when all things are going to be like he wanted it in the first place. But till then, hallelujah, he's still in control. His word is going to be fulfilled. So just realize, get in his word and find out what he has for you. He will speak to you. He will tell you. So listen today as the word comes forth. Hallelujah. Amen. Evangelist Ruben Diaz, Diaz is coming today with the precious word of Yahweh. So receive, hear, and obey, and do the works that he has called you to do. Because you are here for a pur purpose. You're here for a reason. Fulfill your purpose. We're called according to his purpose, so fulfill yours. I ask you in the name of Yeshua, repent and get right with him. In his name, amen. Thank you, uh, Homer. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. As Pastor Jerry says, nothing missing, nothing broken, and that's definitely true. Um, I am going <clears> to, <throat> here about a couple months ago, I was going through some things. And I needed to, I basically needed to remember, realize, sorry, um, who Yeshua, Yeshua was and what he can do. And, uh, but you know, us being natural, me being natural and, and living my life always where I wanted to be, I kind of forgot that. And so, you know, as I allowed these things to come back at me, I, um, I kind of put myself in a... I mean, I just kind of just let myself get down a little bit. And as I started reading, I had, like I said, I had to remember who Yeshua is. So 
if y'all want to go with me to Matthew 16, 16 through 13. I, um, this is when Yeshua is asking, you know, who, who men say that I am. And in Matthew 16, 13, Yeshua came to the region of Caesarea of Philippi, and he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And he replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others say Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? And then Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus and Yeshua replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by the Father in heaven. And with that, I'm going to pray right quick. Father, we just thank you for this day that we are gathered here in your assembly. We ask for the Holy Spirit just to speak to me and to... Uh, imply your word and your wisdom knowledge to to the words that you speak to me so uh, we just ask for your blessing upon us and just to continue to watch over us in Jesus name we pray amen all right like i said <clears throat> i had to be remembered i had to remind myself you know or maybe the holy spirit reminded me because you know the holy spirit it says in i believe luke that uh i mean in acts you know sure when he left the holy spirit was there to remind us of his teachings and uh so now if y'all return to me that one more thing to john and this is where i'm coming to is uh is the day at uh, john 2 at the wedding at canaan of galilee okay on the third day of a wedding took place on canaan Cana and galilee Yeshua's mother was there, and Shua and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Yeshua's mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Yeshua replied, My hour has not yet come. And of course, then his mother said to his servants, Do whatever he tells you to. Now, of course, you know, they were all invited. Yeshua and all of them were invited to, the, to this party, to the wedding. And you got and I'm going to try to describe as best as I can how, how this wedding was going. First of all, it said, you know, I mean, just like that, it says in uh, verse 3, the wine is gone. So I don't know how long this party was, uh, the wedding was going when they realized they, the amount of wine they had was not even going to make it to the end of the seven days of the, of the wedding. With the Jewish tradition, they say it lasts about seven days. So you got to think about the situation. You got your guest, you got the, the bride, bride and the groom, the parents, you know, in, 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 um, in the, what was it called? Uh, uh, the governor was there and he was there. So, and with all of them just enjoying themselves, not really knowing in, in the back, the, the, the caterers realizing that uh, they're running out of wine. So wherever they're at with, with the amount of wine they got, knowing that it's not going to make it, they are, you got to just imagine, they're probably going crazy. You know, where are we going to get this wine? You know, it, they get, first they got to go pluck the wine, then they got to smash it and do all this and this and that. Or do they even got enough money, you know? Is, was that just the amount of money they had just for that, for that wedding? Whatever it was, they were going, I believe, were going like crazy. I mean, just frustrating this and that. How were they going to make? This? How were they going to make it to the end of the wedding? And it says that Mary was there too. So I'm, you know, just assuming she was there. She was in the back. She had to have been in the back. She had to know if she was helping serving because when she knew that they were running out of wine, she was probably just like the rest of them, just running around with the chickens with heads with chicken, you know, chickens with heads cut off, trying to figure out what they're going to do because you got to remember. If they run out of wine, there's reputations involved. There's, 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 a, there's humiliation, there's embarrassment, there's shame because, you know, they, didn't, they ran out of wine. And, you know, it's just impossible. How can the, the parents of the, the bride trust the, the parents of, or the, the, the man of the groom to support, you know, their daughter? They can't even have wine. But uh, 
somewhere down that line, Mary just, I don't know, she just had to snap and realize, oh my gosh, why are we, why are we going crazy? When she finally realized, she, I'm, I'm just saying this, when she finally realized, she probably said, the son of the living Elohim is here, right here in our midst. You know, so when she finally realized, realized that, she went and told him, told him to do something. You know, there is no more wine. And of course, Yeshua goes, woman, why do you involve me? Yeshua replied, my hour has not yet come. Now, just like a mother, you know, she, she wants her, you know, wants your children, you know, wants her children to do something and they want to snap back, you know. No, you know, she told him. And then she told the servants to do whatever he tells you to do and, you know, just probably just walked off. And uh, Yeshua is there, you know, just standing, you know. And, uh, but he did what she asked. And uh, just kind of break off this real quick is uh, Mary was a, you know, I mean, she was just a good mother. She, she had care, she had compassion for, for the people that were there and knowing what was going to happen. You know, she went and asked the son of the living Elohim to help, you know, and he was going to help. Now, my mom, she uh, passed away this past March a, a year ago. And the only reason why I'm saying this is because uh, the way I used to live, I think I've told you once before, I honestly believe that I wouldn't be here today if it went for my mom praying over me, you know. I mean, I imagine there could have been times where she was praying, you know, and, and I'm just saying that maybe she was probably, if he wanted to talk to her, he'd probably tell her, woman, do you know where he's at? You want me to pray for him? He's been there two or three times already. You want me to pray for him? You want me to take care of this? But she was a, she was a persistent mother. You know, she, 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 she prayed to Yeshua to take care of me no matter what. And Yeshua answered. And that's why I honestly believe that's, that's why I'm here today. I mean, nobody knows really a lot of things I went to. But, you know, that's what, you know. So Mary knew that Yeshua was going to do something. She went to the son of the living Elohim and asked him to do something. And, of course, you know, he did. Because, you know, like I said, you just got to remember, all, there was a lot of things that, that didn't happen that could have happened. Like I said, running out of wine and everything that was going to happen. You know, like I said, the reputation and strife and everything. So, and that's why I was getting to this, all this, is uh, we got to invite Yeshua into whatever goes on in our lives. Like I said, I was going through this little struggle here a while back, and I, I've always lived my life the way I wanted to. When it came down to where I was on my knees, begging and crying, whatever, you know, that's when I invited him in my life. But Mary knew that before the wine was going to run out, you know, she went and told him. Uh, I know in this, in this uh, translation here, it says that... Um, Oh, oh, yeah, the, uh, the wine was gone. Another translation, it goes, yeah, there it goes, that, that uh, they're running out of wine. And then whenever Yeshua said, uh, what, does, what does this involve with me? She didn't, she said, it goes, there is no more wine. It's like, I, you know, it's like, hurry up and do something. You know what I'm saying? Hurry up and do something before, before all this happens. He stopped, he stopped a lot of things from happening shame like I said shame embarrassment the reputations that was that was involved in humiliation because he was not only invited to the party but he was also invited to the situation and that's where I've, I've come to learn that God invite Yeshua into whatever we're all our struggles and all our trials you know everything that we go through in life because if you don't you're gonna fall you're gonna be humiliated, embarrassed, whatever. He will pull us out of everything that we get into. Knowingly and unknowingly. I know the ones that we know we put ourselves into that cause trouble. There's consequences, but you know, he, he'll, he'll somehow one way or another, he'll help us pull us out of those. And uh, so whenever she told the servants to do whatever he tells you to do, there stood six stone water jars, the kind used by Jews in ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. And Shua said to the servants, fill the jars with water. 
So he filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. Now, of course, I went to, uh, I got on Google, of course, to figure out what the, uh, the ceremonial washing was, the, the jars that they used, the Jews used. And if I'm right, you know, they, they used these ceremonial jars to, to kind of cleanse themselves. They didn't stick their hands in there, but they poured it into another jar. But the thing was, if anything came out of that jar, it was like dirty. They was not going to touch it. I mean, you know, they had a separate jar. But anyway, what I'm trying to get to is Yeshua, when he turned that hold those jars into water, I mean, from water to wine, he told the, the servants to draw from it. And go give it to the to the the governor, the master of the banquet. It, whatever, it, to me the 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 uh, jars just kind of represent us. No matter how we are, what what we're doing, he 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 puts this new wine in us that would you know represents his blood and the Holy Spirit, you know. So we're 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 cleansed by that. I believe that uh, if if they would have known that if they would have known the water was going to come out of those those uh, jars, that they probably wouldn't have drank it. I mean, they would they probably would never touch it. But what Yeshua touches, it's new, it's whole. I mean, it's 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 clean, it, it's blameless, it's holy. It's, you know, it's just holy. So, yeah, when Hayyim said when he did not realize where it come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside, aside and said, Everyone bring out the choice first wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. <coughs> well, I kinda went ahead of myself, but when you know when we go back here on top of whenever he's telling them to go get the water and put uh fill the jars up. When I was reading I started thinking, well, you know, that's what we gotta do to build our faith up. Because you know she was there, but we got we we got to do our part by putting our our faith into action. When he you know for them for him to bring them the wine that they wanted, they had to go get the jars filled up with full of water. And the and that's just what we got to do too. When we when we act, we want him to help us, we want him to to take care of our needs. Then we got to step out in faith and continue to do what he wants us to do. And he's just not going to go out there and just do it. He wants us to do, put our faith into action. And uh, so, anyways, like I said, whenever he goes, when he did not realize where he'd come from, those servants had drawn from the water. The water knew. Then he called the bridegroom side and said, everyone bring out the choice wine. And then the cheaper wine first. And the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. That's not what we was talking about this and uh, uh Mike brought up a good point. He goes, uh the that verse goes the first will be last and the last will be first, which is a good point. Representing the wine. But anyways, that's that's all I kinda of what I got. Sorry short, but I just like I said, I just learned to realize that uh Yeshua is there. We just got to invite him. We just got to invite him to all our, our, our lives and, our, and, and everything that we go through. And one thing that the, the bride and the groom didn't really even realize was that, uh, you know, the son of the living Elohim was there amongst them. They didn't even know it. You know, and, and just real quick, you know, my, me and my wife's marriage have been together 25 years. And uh, I I was never happy, you know. I, I was I was I basically I, I loved and everything, but I was just I was just too much of myself. And I asked her this morning, you know, when I was there studying at the table, I said, uh, "Do you think she was in our marriage? Do you think she's in our lives now?" And she goes, "Oh yeah, you know, because uh, this past year has been." It's been like a great joy in our relationship, in in our marriage, because for a long time, and you know, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself. That, you know, the truth is that I was a drunk, 
a drunk and I mean, to tell you the truth, I was a druggie too. And I was just, I just took everything to the house. And I was like destroying our house, destroying our marriage. I, I just didn't really want no part in anything that was going on because I, was, I was really wasn't happy. I just had some, a lot of things I had to deal with. And Jerry, Pastor Jerry, when I met him, he helped me through some of it. And, and uh, Pastor Homer and, and, and Mike, they, they uh, prayed with me and helped me remove some generational curses and things that were causing me to do all this stuff. And, uh, I, you know, like I said, I invited them in into everything that was, that was causing all these problems. And so, like I said, she, she said, yeah, our, our marriage is great. I mean, you know, we still have our ups and downs, but we have allowed him to change both of our lives in, in, our, in our marriage together. And that our marriage, you know, basically is great. I mean, everybody sees it now. Yeah, I mean, you know, we got grandchildren, and, and uh, before they said they always tell us they would never li leave us with their grandchildren, you know. So we, it was Yeshua that changed us. Just as he changed everything in the situation at the party, at this wedding, he changed my life too. He changed our lives, changed our weddings, I mean, our, our marriage. And he's continued to change things around us. If you, if you think about it, now, all I ever really heard about on the chapter 2 is just about when Shua changed the water to wine. And I've heard a lot of sermons about it. They just changed where you changed the water to wine. But I never really, I finally just, I guess the Father opened my eyes and, and realized that just inviting Yeshua into this, this whole uh, situation here prevented a lot of things, changed a lot of things, and did something spiritually. I mean, he, he did so many things just in this one chapter just by turning this water into wine. And, and, and like I said, in stopping all this other, you know, humiliation and reputation and all this stuff, all we got to do is just invite them in, invite them into our lives, invite them to our situations. And, you know, with that, I, I just, you know, encourage you to just, just to do that. I mean, I've done it. I'm going to continue to do it. And uh, it will just change our lives. Amen. So I'll just pray right quick. Father, we just thank you. Uh, just give me the opportunity to, to just to preach your word yeah. and to uh, and speak the truth of who you really are and what you've done in my life. You know what you can do in, in everybody's lives. Okay. Just where you can change things and turn things around tremendously. And uh, we just want to thank you for that. In Yeshua's name, pr name pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.